Hi, welcome to this tutorial on differentiation. Now, what I'm going to show you is how we differentiate equations like this. Already we have seen that if we've got terms of the form ax to the power n, dy by dx is equal to an multiplied by x to the power n minus 1. Now, when you're given something like this, it's very tempting to think that to differentiate it, all you need to do is differentiate each of the terms on the top and divide it by the differential of each of the terms in the denominator here. Getting dy by dx equals 15x squared minus 7 all divided by 2x. This is totally the wrong method. So, how do we differentiate things like this? Well, let's just rub this out, okay? To differentiate things like this, what you can do, there's two methods, I'll show you both methods, what you can do is to think of this like this. We can take the x squared, think of it as 1 over x squared being multiplied by the 5x cubed minus 7x minus 1. Now, 1 over x squared can be written as x to the minus 2. Hopefully you remember the rule that x to the power minus n means 1 over x to the power n. That's the rule that I'm using here. So, we have x to the minus 2 then being multiplied by 5x cubed minus 7x minus 1. Now I can multiply x to the minus 2 with each of the terms in the bracket here. So expanding that, remember just to add the powers, we get 5x to the power 1, or just simply 5x, and then minus 7x to the power minus 1, and then minus x to the power minus 2. Now I have each of the terms in the form ax to the power n. So I can differentiate with respect to x. So therefore dy by dx would equal, so the differential of 5x is 5. Differential of minus 7x to the minus 1 becomes plus 7x to the minus 2. And then for this one, Remember you have a 1 in the front here, a minus 1 actually. Minus 1 times minus 2 is plus 2. Drop the power by 1, so that's x to the minus 3. Cleaning this up gives 5 plus 7 multiplied by 1 over x squared using this particular rule here. And for the next term, 2x to the minus 3. x to the minus 3 is 1 over x cubed, so put that in. Multiply out the fractions there, we have 5 plus 7 over x squared plus 2 over x cubed. And so that is the differential with respect to x then of this equation up here. Now I did say at the beginning that there was another way of doing this. And some people prefer this way, so it's up to you whichever way you want to use. Well, let's just copy that question out again. y equals 5x cubed minus 7x minus 1. And it's all divided by x squared. Now in this example, you have three terms on the top divided by a single term on the bottom. And so, because we have a single term on the bottom, we can think of this as 5x cubed divided by x squared minus the next term, 7x, divided by the x squared. And then finally, the minus 1, divided by x squared. Each term on the top then being divided by the single term in the denominator. Now we can clean each of these terms up. 5x cubed divided by x squared just subtract the powers, 3 take away 2 is 1, so this is the same as 5x. For this one, we've got minus 7x to the power 1 here, 
over x squared, subtract the powers, and you've got 7x to the power minus 1. So minus 7x to the minus 1. And for 1 over x squared, 1 over x squared, where n is 2, is x to the minus 2 by that law. So we have minus x to the minus 2. And what we've arrived at here is what we arrived at over here for y. So now I've got all the terms then in the form x to the power n. I just carry on as I did down here. All right? So we just say and so on. Now, what happens if I had a number instead of just x squared? I suppose I had, say, 3x squared there. How would I differentiate something like this? Well, in fact, what you do is exactly the same. I would put the 3 down here, and I'd have 1 over 3x squared. But what you've got to be very careful about, don't make the mistake of bringing the 3 up to the top and putting the 3 there and saying it's 3x to the minus 2. Keep the 3 down below. So, we would then multiply out the bracket and we would have 3 underneath each one of these terms. Differentiating Instead of getting 5 as we did before, we're now going to have 5 thirds. Instead of getting this term, we would now have the 7 thirds there. And similarly for this one, we would have 2 thirds. The 3 would go in every one of these terms and would show up. There. So you can see that by introducing a number, really, it's very straightforward. Just leave it on the bottom. Only bring up your x powers. If I had the 3 in this one, what I can do is put the 3 there, the 3 there, the 3 there. So then I would have 3 there, 3 there, and 3 there. And that is exactly the same as what we had down here. And so you should be able to carry on and differentiate. OK, so that brings us to the end of this tutorial. And uh, as I say, I hope you've been able to uh, follow that. And you can use these ideas to differentiate any f fractional equation of this format by using these particular methods.